Back on Inside Tennessee with Congressman Tim Burchett, John North. Tim, you came in arguably with a historic freshman class. Um, it shook up the power distribution in the yeah. House. And um, I'm just curious, obviously, I sure wouldn't want to be a lone freshman like you are right now, but there is power in <coughs> coalescing, in working together. Yeah. And I'm curious whether it's with, with one party or both parties, have you been able to do that? Have you identified people who you think you can work with and you guys can actually get something done aside from the stalagmites and the stalactites yeah. that have been in there forever? <coughs> well, oddly enough, um, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, I just call her Cortez and she calls me Burchett, so it works out pretty well. We had a, a meeting, um, not too long ago, it went on about 45 minutes to an hour, <clears throat> and we were discussing, I was trying to interject capitalism into her New Green Deal, because I told her, I said, <coughs> excuse me, I said that, that the, um, you know, it's either the carrot or the stick, and y'all are using the stick too much. I said this, I, I said, I know you want to outlaw airplanes, and then, and, and, and I know. She doesn't quite want to I, outlaw I know airplanes, that. Tim. I know that, but. That let, rhetoric's Let me get to it. Let Jesse rob this train. Uh, anyway. We, um, uh, so I said, airplanes. I said, MIT has, a, um, has an airplane now that runs without any moving parts, the engine does, which is incredibly advanced. And it's like my daddy was said, Buck Rogers kind of stuff. I've watched this video on it several times. I still don't quite understand it. But anyway, it, it, is, it is fascinating that they can actually run a plane. It's basically like a little kite. It's a toy, about the length of a football field, but no, um, it doesn't put any carbon in the atmosphere and it, and it runs clean. And I said, I said, granted, it's, it's a toy now. I said, but that, that, that cell phone you have is a $100 million computer 20 years ago, according to folks right. at, at, at Oak Ridge. <clears throat> so I said, Let, let's, let's put some enticement out there in the private sector to develop this thing. Let's see what happens. I said, and that's, that's how you can make some change with this Green New Deal. Also, and I know a little was bit. Was she receptive to that? Yeah, except um, I think the fellow that she ended up firing was not because he thought it was a trap. And honestly, I just want to see it succeed. I want, I love, I, I love capitalism, and I love, and I love the environment. You know, I'm an organic gardener for goodness sakes. Um, I don't use any chemicals in my garden. Of course, it's out of control because I've been in D.C. But uh, my point is, is that capitalism can can play a role in that. And uh, you know, and uh, like I said, her staff was like, uh, "Burchett setting you up for a trap." And really, I'm not. I just want to see it happen. I think we can employ folks. I mean, just think all the all the mind energy that, that goes into these things like that. And if we could say, in 20 years, develop an airplane that doesn't doesn't put any pollutants into the into the atmosphere, I think that'd be a great. I would love to buy stock in that company if they came up with it. And I also talked about um, the future of, of automobiles. I think internal combustion engines. I, I met with some folks at Vol Volkswagen. I don't think they'd mind me saying that they're not going to put any more development in internal combustion engines. It's going electric. I mean, we better realize it. The generate uh, the cars that we have today are going to be dinosaurs soon. And I'm a I'm a car and motorcycle guy. Y'all know that. And so um, I think I explained to her we just got to get ahead of. It. I said composting. You know, 85 percent of the waste stream in some areas could be composted. We turned into soil that we could in organically put out on the, uh, and, and I said, one day we're gonna, we're gonna mine our, our landfills and we're gonna, we're gonna sell our sewage as a commodity on the open market because there's gonna be a market for those kind of things. And, you know, and hopefully things like that took, but you know, the Green New Deal was kind of a flash in the pan for a while and now they've moved on to something else. But, and, and I'm I, not sure they've moved on from it yet. Tim. Well, I mean, the Senate, the Senate pretty much squashed it because it was just too hot a potato. I think they, they rushed it out there. I think if they would have had somebody advising them and breaking it down and had experts come in and testify on each thing. And so I think it's, but you know, there's so much, and, and they ask the, the four ladies, they ask their opinion on everything, and they're supposed to have an opinion on it from Jeffrey Epstein to, to whatever, the environment. And then they get all the press and it kind of takes all the oxygen out of the room. And then it creates an animosity. As I told her and I've told the other, other three members of her group, I said, you know, it's not the Republicans that are gonna get you, it's gonna be the Democrats because I've seen it in politics, I've seen it with Republicans, I've seen it with Democrats. You get too big and they'll cut you off. You're talking about the squad. Yeah, the squad or the gang of four, whatever yeah, you want to call them. Right. And, I, and I serve with all of them. Um, Omar and I serve on um, foreign affairs and um, in, in the budget committee. And of course I see Cortez all the time and, and Tlaib and the rest of them. I see them all the time and we talk. Because I, I, I don't think it's, I, people come up to me and warn me all the time say, you shouldn't be seen talking to them. Somebody's going to get a picture. That's really kind of nonsense, isn't it? Yeah, and you see, and you know the funny thing, Don? You see the Democrats tell them the exact same thing about getting a picture made with me. And I, that's what's killing us. They, they, if, if we stay divided, 
it keeps the same old cronies sure. in both parties in power. Do you feel like there's some traction be, be to, um, among your conversations with them on some areas of agreement? I do. You know, I work out. I was saying earlier, I work out with Joe Kennedy, who obviously is a Democrat, is, is a Democrat very left, and he, he's probably one of my best buddies, actually. I mean, we work out together. We're in a, um, a little boot camp thing at, at 6.30 in the morning. And, um, of course, I don't ever like being in his group because he is a Kennedy and it's competition from, <laughs> from the word go, you know. And so, um, and it's a bipartisan group. I go to a bipartisan prayer group. But, see, that doesn't get in the news. But those relationships are being built and I, may be the are. seed for positive change. And, and I think leadership in both parties is ignoring that to their own, to their own peril. We've got to take a quick sense. break. Don, we'll have you, uh, it does make sense. And uh, we'll lead off with our third block and Don Bosch right after this.